Hello, everybody, and I'm Miss Jessica, and I'm here at EVPL McCullough for a really fun, simple science day. Now, these are experiments that you can do at home. Now, remember, always ask your grown-up before doing anything that we're going to be doing today. Now, we are going to be talking about a fruit, and I wonder if you can guess which fruit we're gonna be talking about today. Apples! Now, apples, we can do so many fun things with apples. Now, a really, really simple activity that you could try to do is, can you stack the apples? Oh, those are gonna fall over. There are so many fun things. But first, let's be scientists and actually talk about the parts of an apple. So one of the first things that you might see on an apple is this part right here up at the top. And a couple of my apples have some, and some of my apples, it might have already fallen off. Do you know what this is right here? It's the stem. So that is what attaches to the tree to help grow the apples. So that's where they are attached to the tree. And then when you go and you pull an apple off, that was their stem. And that's where they got all their nutrients so that they could grow really, really red and delicious. Now I have some red apples here but there are other colored apples that you might see in the store. So these are red, but there's also green apples and yellow apples, and there's all kinds of different colors within those colors. So you might see some different colored apples in the store. Now the outside of the apple is where we see that color. And does anybody know what this is called right here? we actually have the same thing on our bodies. It's called the skin. So the outside of the apple is called the skin and that's where you'll see the apple's color. Now let's be scientists and examine more parts of the apple. Now I'm going to use my apple slicer. Now. Before you do this, you have to check with your grown-up because this does have some very sharp edges and they should probably be the ones to help with this part of it. So I'm actually gonna put my apple slicer right here on top of my apple and just push down just like that open. You might've even seen some of the juice come up. Urgh, gotta use some muscles. All right, so now let's look at some parts of our apple. All right, so now this part right in here, this kind of yellowy part, we call that on our skin, we can also call this flesh. Well, that's called flesh right there. So when you're looking at an apple and that's the part that you're eating and crunching on, it's called the flesh. That's pretty neat. Now, this main part in the center Oh, let's see if we can get mine out. Of course, it's not going to cooperate while we're making our video. That part is the center of the apple and it's also called the core. So that's the middle part of the apple and that's where you'll find, let's see if we can find something else in here. Oh, I see one. Okay, now I'm gonna use my knife, but remember, this is a grown-up step. Let's see if I can cut in here. Oh, I definitely see some. Do you see some? Do you know what those are called? Those are the seeds. Oh, and there's one right there I can get out. Okay, oh, there's one. Now, this is what we would plant if we want to grow more apples. So this is where the apples come from. Now, they need more than just to be planted. They also need some good sunlight and some good rain. And they also need someone to not disturb it and dig it up before it's ready. But yeah, this is where an apple comes from is that seed. Oh, and I just dropped it in my bowl. So that's pretty neat that we've seen all the different parts of our apple. Now, what's really fun is that an apple can also connect to our five senses. So I can definitely, mm, 
saying, I can smell the apple with my nose. I can see the apple with my eyes. And you can see all the different colors of the apple. You can see the shape. You can see the parts of the apple. Now, earlier when I was slicing my apple, you can definitely hear the apple. It has a nice crunching sound to it, especially when you bite into an apple. That's a good crunching sound too. Now, you can also taste an apple. Now, this is something silly, but I'm actually allergic to apples and I can't eat them. So I can't taste it because I would get really sick if I did. But if you're not allergic to apples, then you can definitely taste an apple. And different apples have different tastes to them. Some are a little sweeter than others. So that's really fun to see what the different colors of apples taste like. And I can also feel my apple. So the outside of the apple is really, really smooth. But the inside of the apple is a little more bumpy and it has kind of a texture to it. So that's something that's really neat. Plus, I can feel the stem and how kind of flexible that is and kind of hard. And then I can also feel the seeds and how hard those are. So there's lots of different parts of an apple. And then we can also connect it to our five senses. Now we're gonna be doing some experiments today with our apples so that we can be scientists. Now the first one I'm gonna show you is not exactly an experiment, but it's something that is really, really fun and connects to being a builder. So I'm gonna clean up my apple, my apples right here and get ready for our next experiment. And with our next experiment, I'm gonna need some apples and I'm also going to need some toothpicks and I'll show you a really fun activity that you can do with your apples. So I'll be right back. All right, now my first activity that I wanted to show you is that you can be an engineer with your apples, which means that you are designing and building a structure. So I took some apple pieces that I cut up, and remember, that's a grown-up step, but I bet they'll let you help. And I got some toothpicks, and then I decided to see, oh, what can I build with my apples? And look at that! Now, there's all kinds of ways to do this type of challenge. You can see how tall you can build your structure. You could see how many uh, pieces you can use. So if you say, hmm, what's the tallest thing you can build with 10 pieces of apple or with one apple cut up or two apples cut up, that would be a lot of pieces. So let's see how many pieces I used in my structure. Okay, so I used one, two, three, four on the bottom. Then I used one, five, six, seven, eight. So I used four more for the kind of middle here. Oh, nine and 10 at the top. Now you can see if what you can design, if you can design something really, really fun. Can you make a really silly animal out of your apple slices? You can do so many different things. Now, this is the amazing part of apples, is that when you go to put your toothpick in them, it stays in there and it's really, really sturdy. Now you can also do this activity with marshmallows, but sometimes those are a little too squishy and they make it hard for your structure to stand up. But apples are pretty perfect. So I could see, oh, can I add an apple here on my structure? Oh, and let's see, I'm gonna add a toothpick to this apple and I'm gonna add it over here. Oh, this is getting very interesting. And that's all you do. You just keep going and seeing what you can design. So that is one of the really neat things about apples is that there's so many things to do with them, including building with them. 
Now you can add other fun, interesting food to make this a little more exciting. You could add raisins, you could add marshmallows, you could even try adding some spaghetti noodles and see what you can do to make that look pretty interesting. So there's so many endless things you can do. So I'm gonna keep going with my structure and we're going to switch to our next activity. So I'm gonna finish this up, but I'll be right back. All right, for our next experiment, we are going to be super scientists. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but when you cut open an apple, it will start to turn a different color than it was when you first sliced it. So it starts to get kind of this brown color on it. And, hmm, I wonder if there's anything that we could put on an apple that would maybe stop that brown from happening. I wonder what that brown is. Hmm. I know, it's called oxidizing. It happens when the apple comes into contact with oxygen. And the oxygen is the air that we breathe. So whenever that air comes into contact with the apple, it oxidizes the apple, which means that it starts to react and turn it brown. So I wanna do an experiment to see if there's anything to slow this down or to stop it from happening. Okay, so I'm gonna use some different liquids and you can do this at home and you can use all kinds of different liquids. I've got a variety today. Now, one thing I want to do is have my apples sliced so your grown up can help with that. The other thing I want to do is to make sure that I have some paper towels handy because I can get very messy and I definitely wanna be sure I can clean up if I do spill something. Okay, I also made some labels for the different liquids that I'm going to be using because I don't wanna get confused later if I forget which one's which because some of them will look a little close to each other. Now the other thing we want to do is we want to have one apple slice that has nothing on it so that we can use that for what we call in the science experiment world, our control, which means that we can see what is happening if we do nothing to it at all. So this is my nothing apple. Now the other thing that, see I've got my little, my little label on it, nothing. Now, the other thing we want to do is to make sure we're using the same amount of liquid for all the other apple slices. So that way we can definitely measure our experiment and make sure we're doing the same thing to everybody so there's no confusion. We can say, yes, we did this experiment exactly like a scientist would. Okay, so I'm gonna start with water. So I've got some water. And I want to use the same amount of liquid for all of my apples. So I am going to be using a half a cup. Now, because I'm using so many different liquids and I don't have enough half cup measuring cups, so I'm going to use a fourth of a cup and just do it twice and that will equal a half. Okay, so I've got my water. So I'm gonna pour out one fourth and now I'm gonna pour out another one and that equals a half a cup. So I can make sure I'm measuring with the same for all of my apples. Now, another thing that you might want to do is try to see if you can get your apple slices the same size. Now, I actually had to slice two apples because some of my slices on my first one were so teeny tiny that I was thinking, mm, those don't really look the same as my others. And I wanna make sure that I'm doing this like a scientist so I can try and measure everything equally. Okay, so here is my water. And I'll put this over to the side with my water label so I don't forget. Okay, next 
oh, is soda. Now, I went ahead and chose some Sprite because I wanted to make sure that I could see it a little easier. Now, you can use any kind of liquids that you want. You could even use Coke or Pepsi or root beer or orange soda, grape soda. There are so many choices out there. But I wanted to use a clear one so that I could see what's happening with my apple. Okay, so here's my half a cup measuring cup and I'm gonna pour out, oh. Ooh, and sodas are carbonated, and this is definitely reacting with all kinds of bubbles on my apple. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Okay, so I've got my soda, so I'm gonna put that right here. Okay, next, oh, the next one is a smelly one. This one, we're going to do vinegar. Ooh, this one is definitely really stinky. Okay, so we're gonna measure using a fourth cup, so I'm gonna do it twice. So here we go, one, two. All right, and I've got my label, vinegar, so I'll put this one over here. Oh, the next one I've got is milk. Now I didn't want to get my milk bottle out, so I just went ahead and measured this one out and we're going to go ahead and pour that in there. All right, so I've got my milk label. So I'm gonna put this one over here with that label. And my last liquid I want to try is lemon juice what this is gonna do to our apple. Okay, now this is a very, very large bottle of lemon juice. And got our half cup here. And so I'm gonna squeeze to get that juice out. All right. Okay, so we've got a half cup of that one and I've got that one labeled. All right, so I'm actually gonna let these sit for a couple of hours, and then when I come back, I'm gonna see what has happened to our apples. So we've got our one with nothing, and we're gonna see what happens if you don't do anything to it, and then we're gonna see what happens when we do all of these other different liquids and how the apple reacts with those. All right, so, I'm gonna be back in a couple of hours, but to you guys, it's gonna seem like just a few seconds. All right, so here we go, time is passing. I'll see you in a minute. All right, we're back, and I have let my apples sit for a couple of hours, so now we're going to pull them out of their liquids and see what they look like and if they've changed. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the one that we did nothing to it, so we can see what that one looks like. Ooh, that one has turned pretty brown. It's got lots and lots of brown spots on it. So we're gonna put that one right there. All right, now I'm actually gonna use my toothpicks from earlier to help me get my apples out of their liquids. So this one is water. And that one is, that one's kind of brown. Kind of kind of got a little bit of a brown to it. Okay, our next one we're gonna do is soda. And I'm gonna scooch these guys down. Now this one, the soda still has lots and lots of bubbles happening in it. Okay, that one too brown. Put that one right there. Oh, the next one was vinegar, which is very, very smelly. And whoa, that one really turned brown. I wonder if it's because it's so smelly. Okay, our next one we'll do is the milk. one definitely has some brown on it. 
Okay, and our last one is our lemon juice. So we'll go ahead and grab that one. Whoa, that one doesn't have any brown on it at all. Huh. All right, so you can see all of our apples here. Oh, let me turn the water one around so you can see it a little bit better. And we have had some interesting things happen with our apples. Okay, so looking at it, the nothing definitely turned brown. The water, that one actually looks pretty good. The soda doesn't look too bad either. The vinegar one looks icky. Milk is a little brown. And lemon juice, wow, that one really hasn't turned any colors. Now, what's happening with this? Now, lemon juice is very, very acidic. It has an acid in it that is known to stop oxidation in apples. So it stops when apples are turning brown. Now, apples have something in them that's called an enzyme that when it's exposed to the oxygen, they start to turn brown. Now, if we are putting apples in any kind of liquid, it's supposed to help stop that or cut off that oxygen supply so the apples won't get to the oxygen anymore and maybe they won't turn brown. So I bet that's what happened, definitely with our one in water. Now, some of these liquids, because of what they are, are reacting with our apples and maybe turning them browner faster like this one. So this is a really fun experiment that you can try at home. You can try it with different liquids. You can see what happens if you leave them in even longer. I had all of my apples sitting in my liquids for two hours. So that was a very long time. But you could see what happens after just one hour and then come back again at two hours and see what's changed. You could even go three hours and see what it looks like after that. Now, something that you can do at home is you could actually taste your apples and see if the liquids have changed how they taste. Now, definitely check with your grown up first, but that's something that you could do with your apples. I can't, I'm allergic, but that would be a fun experiment to see if it changes the taste of them. So this was really neat to see how oxygen reacts with my apples and how different liquids can affect them. Wow, I feel like a scientist right now. All right, I'm gonna clean this up so that we can get ready for our next experiment. All right, our next experiment is going to get very messy. So I'm actually gonna take my rings off because it's gonna definitely get messy with my hands. We are going to be making applesauce oobleck. Now, oobleck is one of those amazing things to play with, and this is extremely safe as far as playing with it, and just in case you accidentally get some in your mouth, it's not going to hurt you. It doesn't taste very good, but it's something you can definitely play with safely. Okay, so the two things, well, three things I'm going to need. We need applesauce, we need some cornstarch, and then I also have some water handy just in case my oobleck is a little too stiff or just not working very well, then I can add some water to it to help it along. Okay, so now to make oobleck, we need our cornstarch. So we're gonna start with a cup of cornstarch. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour that into my bowl. Now I also need some applesauce. So we're gonna go ahead and open this. And we're going to do a half a cup of applesauce. Whoa. And we're gonna pour those together. I've got my spoon here. And now I'm gonna start mixing that up. Now this smells delicious. 
Now you may have made all kinds of different oobliks. I know we have a spooky science experiment and that has where you can make some really fun spooky oobliks. Now this, oh, this is starting to look really good. Now oobliks is one of those really, really fun things that it's not a liquid and it's not a solid. It's kind of both. Now liquids take the shape of whatever container they're in. Now, the oob, like you can see, is just hanging out in there. Solids have their own shape, where liquids still just fit to the container that they're in. But oobleck can do both. Now when you pick up oobleck, and you try to kind of put it together, it can get really clumpy and hard and almost like a Play-Doh, but as soon as you stop messing with it, oh, you can see it start to flatten back out and get really oozy. Now that means that it's what we call a non-Newtonian fluid. Oh, see, there it goes oozing. But I could also play with it almost like it's a dough. Oh, but then as soon as I stop playing with it, it starts oozing again. Now there's all kinds of things like oobleck, like quicksand is one of those non-Newtonian fluids. Now, when you are doing this at home, you can make all kinds of fun shapes and things with your oobleck. Can you see if you can make a ball with it? So let's do that, let's make a ball. Oh, I'm gonna roll it into a ball. <gasps> but as soon as I stop playing with it, you can see it flattened out and it becomes all oozy again. Oh, but if I wanna make it into a ball again, I can. So definitely try some applesauce oobleck because it is really fun to play with. Now I will tell you though that it is messy. So you can see I have my place or my tablecloth down on my desk and definitely have some paper towels nearby. Now, if it's too clumpy and just not really getting that liquidy kind of ooziness to it, you can always try adding a little bit of water and see if that helps, or just try to add a little bit more applesauce, but this is pretty perfect. You can tell your oobleck is really good if when you pick it up, it clumps like a ball, but then as soon as you stop playing with it, it starts oozing just like that. Oh, this is amazing. Because when you touch it, it feels hard. But then as soon as you stop, oh, your finger will sink in. Here, I'll show you that a little closer because that's pretty neat. Okay, so I'm gonna make a ball and see when I'm touching it, it's nice and hard. But as soon as I stop, oh, my finger sinks into it. Whoa! So I hope you have had some fun with all of our different experiments today, examining the parts of an apple, building a really cool apple tower, experimenting with different liquids and how they affect apples, and then also seeing a really neat recipe for oobleck. So for, to make oobleck, you just need two to one. So two parts cornstarch to one part of applesauce. So I did one cup of cornstarch to a half a cup of applesauce and then some water or maybe add some more applesauce if you need to, if it's a little too dry and just not working with you. But this is a really fun thing to experiment with and see what shapes you can make, how it reacts with different things, with different objects. But remember, always check with your grown up first. But I hope you had some fun with us doing some science and becoming scientists and engineers today. And I hope to see you again soon. Don't forget to check out our resources on evpl.org. We've got all kinds of amazing things on there. If you go to our YouTube page, EVPL Library, and like and subscribe, then you will always be notified when we get new things posted like fun science videos or story times. Oh, and there it goes dripping. Whoa. So I hope you had some fun today and I hope to see you guys again soon.